and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Well, it's time for another bootleg corner, and today we're looking at another Sega Mega Drive bootleg pirate Jimmy Riddled non official game. We are looking at the Taiwanese modded bootleg copy of Soul Blade for the Mega Drive, and not just any version of Soul Blade, we're talking about the apparently super version, whatever that means. Now, the game itself has got the options menu here, which I still believe in most modded games means almost nothing. But what we'll do is we'll set the battle count to nice and low there. We'll go, apparently you can't go lower than two. And we'll put the game to infinite time. But this game that was released, I say released, unofficially passed out there from Taiwan in 1997 is a bootleg version of the Soul Calibur series. But this time released for the Sega Mega Drive. And once again, I keep using words like released, but let's face it, it is a completely modded bootleg copy. And like all of these bootlegs, they are terrible they're badly put together and they've probably been developed over the course of about four days reusing an old pallet structure and then pumped out there for poor old holly holiday makers and mugs online that end up playing them much like myself now i never got i never played this game when it was released back in 97 but here we are 20 years later and here i am going to play this incredibly shoddy bootleg now this game once again completely removed and not endorsed in any way by Namco or Sega. There's, there is actually trivia and facts about this game that I'll talk about later on. But without further ado, let's get into this game, shall we? Uh, we've got versus battle mode and arcade mode. So let's go straight into arcade here. And let's check out that music. As awful as it sounds. Pretty shoddy, right? Let's move that over there. That is some rough stuff. So, do you know what? Let's go with old familiar. Let's go with what should say Mitsurugi, but apparently his name is Hashiro. And we're going up against Rock. Let's have a look. So three button structure, block, uh, block, sword and kick. So let's see if we've got any of the moves from the popular franchise. First thing that's hitting me is a distinct lack of sound effects. Awful lack of sound effects there. And apparently now I can face the wrong way. I'm not quite sure what that means. And I can't hit the enemy either. So we have gone almost no time into this bootleg and we've broken it. So, all right. That's the first time we've played it. Let's give it another go. Let's reset this bad boy. Start again. Maybe we're going to give him a miss this time. Let's go with Taki. And we're up against Sion. Let's leap back. And we can block just by pressing back, making the block button utterly redundant. And now I've graphically screwed up. So yes, things are going well. And once again, we can't hit the enemy. It gets worse. Not only can I not hit the enemy, but every time I hit the enemy, my health is going down. This truly is a magnificent piece of shit. Um, let's, let's keep hitting and see what happens. So I got, quote, knocked out. Let's have another round, shall we? And we haven't even fixed the sprite. What a comical joke piece of nonsense this is. Once again, let's give it another reset and try another character and just really test the boundaries on just how buggered up this port is. Oh, that music is starting to cut through me. Lee Long, let's give him a go. Mr. Nunchucks. And the music's gone. Okay. Her sprite, oh no, and the sprite's buggered up already. And once again, apparently I'm hurting myself. I, I'm literally a case of stop hitting yourself. So if I move over here, I'm literally just pressing the attack key there and knocking myself out. Do you know what? This is as good a time as any to talk about the trivia, shall we? Let's pause this for round two. And my sprites are well and truly buggered this time around, but... Once again, this is Soul Blade, 
a super soul blade even for the Mega Drive. It was a bootleg slash pirate that was released, pirate, ironic, Cervantes, um, in 1997 uh, in the Taiwanese market and some copies did leak out of Taiwan. Um, it was an unlicensed game featuring characters from the popular franchise from Namco. Um, also known as uh, Soul Edge is also known as Soul Blade in the UK. Little is known about the origins of this game where it was developed. Apparently it was developed by just two geezers that were knocking out lots of tech and other um, and Virtua Fighter clones and you will see more of them on the channel. Uh, just so we go through the entire library of these horrendous monstrosities uh, to the gaming community. They also created versions for the SNES and Game Boy Color. I bet that Game Boy Color version is bloody awful. Um, on top of that, the controls are considered bad even by Soul Blade standards uh, with a three button engine uh, of block, punch and kick with a completely unnecessary block that if you just hold back, you block. Um, but unfortunately, there's such a delay between the entry of those buttons, something I've already picked up on, um, that uh, because they'd actually created something known as Tekken 3 Special Edition, something I've also featured on the channel. And that Tekken 3 Special Edition um, this is just a port with recreated sprites. Unfortunately, there is a delay built into it so that when you press a button, there's a huge delay and even the hit detection is by no means spot on. Hence why I was end up able to hit myself even wasn't I wasn't hitting the enemy. Now, the final boss on the SNES version of the game is Lee Long, the person I uh, uh, was playing as. But you may have noticed, even though I selected Lee Long, the name at the top there is Heshiro, or in other words, Mitsurugi from earlier on. So it's still not working at all. But the palette is so messed up that even when you face the final variant of the boss, all that happens is, is they change the colour. And in the case of the Mega Drive version, the last boss is Cervantes. And Cervantes has Shadow Cervantes, who I believe is representative of the Soul Edge last boss. But either way, is awful. The Lee Long version is no different. And lastly, the SNES version shows a hint of English at the beginning. But unfortunately, that English is press start button spelt B-U-T-T-O-M, which is most likely in stolen from Sonic Jam 6 where the same error occurs. So just a rip off of that original text. But let's get back into this godforsaken game, shall we? Let's have a good look. And would you believe it, the game has actually crashed on a pause screen. But you know what? We're not defeated yet. We're still going to see what we can do with this godforsaken one. Let's have a look. One more for the win. Let's give Cervantes a play, shall we? And that awful music. Okay, Cervantes, show you what you're worth. We don't even have special moves. Oh no, one kick and I'm a graphical monstrosity that can only hit itself. I think it's safe to say that we're not going to be playing this game much more. We've given this more than enough air time as it is. But this is, are we going to let myself, do you know what, let's let the time count us out. Because let's face it, this game does not deserve to be played. And this is a classic example of why bootlegging and these awful, almost parodies of games shouldn't exist and you shouldn't fund them. But this has been... Um, Soul Edge for the Mega Super Soul Edge. There you go, I remember it. Super Soul Edge for the Sega Mega Drive, the awful bootleg pirate copy. If you've enjoyed this video, or want to see more bootlegs, or you remember any bootlegs I've got stories, pop them down there in the comments and we'll see if we can get them on the channel. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. See you next time.